Now look at this, guys. An average old man in his 60s, 50 years ago, had higher testosterone levels than an average young man today. Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Look at the testosterone levels that old men had 50 years ago compared to today. Keep in mind, this is 60-year-old men compared to the average 20 to 25-year-old today, right? Let's start with the first group. I'm going to show you guys young men 50 years ago, old men 50 years ago, healthy and elite, right? Healthy and average compared to today. Let's start with the first category. Healthy young men about 50 years ago had about 1,200 nanogram per deciliter testosterone levels, right? If you look at the literature, especially the studies that were done on Europeans and things like that, they all come to the same conclusion. Healthy young men in the 95th percentile had 1,270 nanogram per deciliter on average. And in some studies, it was actually higher than that. But hold on, it gets worse, guys. Healthy old men, about 65 years old, so between 60 and 69, had 1,189 nanogram per deciliter on average. Think about that for a second. These are healthy, elite, old men in their 60s, right? And that's going to lead into the video I'm going to make soon where I debunk the myth that age lowers testosterone. Guys, that's a bullshit myth that the TRT industry put out there because, again, it's a $2 billion industry. They have to find a way to make money. So they lied to you fuckers and told you that, oh, losing testosterone as you age is a natural process. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm going to make a whole video debunking that. There are so many studies that actually debunk that. Aging does not lower testosterone. It's the shit that you guys do as you age that lowers testosterone. But again, I have a whole separate video planned for that. But look at this. But look at this, guys. Almost 1,200 nanogram per deciliter. These are 65-year-old men on average. And see, look, it was quite similar to 20-year-old men. And keep in mind, these were the healthy ones, the ones that were doing good habits, the ones in the 95th percentile and higher. Because we all know the strongest correlation with testosterone is your health. It's how you eat, your lifestyle, sleep, things like that, right? Especially how you eat. But now let's look at the average young man from 50 years ago, right? This is an average young man, not super in shape, not super healthy, also not super sick, just average, right? They had 754 nanogram per deciliter testosterone. That was the average. Today, if you have 700, you're seen as a fucking elite, right? Meanwhile, 50 years ago, 25-year-old men were walking around with 754 average, right? And as you can see, which again, that goes back to the video I'm going to make about how age does not lower testosterone. Look, Super healthy old men in their 60s, 50 years ago, had higher testosterone than 25-year-old average men 50 years ago in the same time frame, right? It's not about age. It's about how you take care of your body, your diet, how you eat, how you sleep, sunlight, all of these habits. And there are, again, there are, there's so much research behind this. Not just my personal experience, not just my experience coaching clients, but even the literature back this up. When people fix their diet, especially the diet. You can sleep all you want, but if you eat like trash, your body's going to have no cofactors, no nutrients to make testosterone. Now, watch this. This is where it gets freaking insane, right? Because you guys want to blame it on, oh, it's, it's, the, it's the BPA, it's the environmental disruptors. If you actually look at the literature and the statistics, those actually play a minimal role. Yes, they do hurt testosterone, but not as much as a crap diet, right? But in, anyway, let's look at this. Average old man, again, 50 years ago. So that's not super elite. It's not 95 percent. That's just an average old man 50 years ago. Not super healthy, not super sick, just right there in the middle, right? Probably walking around with a disease or two, who knows? 638 nanogram per deciliter. Meanwhile, the average young man today, right? Probably one of you fuckers watching this video right now, the average young man today is walking around swinging his balls with 500 nanogram per deciliter. That's the average today. It's between 400 and 600. It's even lower depending on which nation you look at or in the city, whatever. But on average, the average person, including people who lift weights and think they're healthy because they pop a multivitamin or two, are walking around with 500 nanogram per deciliter. Some 350. But again, it's the average. Now, look at this, guys. An average old man in his 60s, 50 years ago, had higher testosterone levels than an average young man today. And you guys have eaten the lie that it's just because of plastics and it's because of uh, uh, environment. Guys, it's not. It's your diet. It's your diet. Right? Because studies show that when people fix the nutrient deficiencies, guess what? They actually go back up to around 1,900 nanogram per deciliter today in this day and age with the plastics. I have so many studies on this, and I'm going to make so many more videos about that where I'll show you guys literally experiments where they take young men, they correct their deficiency, 
right? And then, boom, despite the BPA, despite the plastics, despite all the BS that you guys like to blame, which don't get me wrong, they play a small role, but it's not as big as a role as you guys think. But in those studies, those people go back to 900, 1,000. I have a study coming up where they fixed that choline and B10 efficiency, and the young man went to 1,500 today, right, in this day and age. So I don't want to hear the excuses, guys, right? You think when they fix the nutrient deficiencies, or out of nowhere, plastics disappear? No. Yes, BPA is bad. Yes, you know, the chlorine in the, in, the, in the water. And yes, those things are bad. But what they do is they increase inflammation, they increase oxidative stress, and they increase the estradiol receptor alpha. But all of those things can be mitigated when you have a good diet. Enough micronutrients, enough vitamins and minerals, enough antioxidants, which all of you guys are lacking in your diet. I know because, again, I've been coaching for over a decade. The first thing I do when I have clients, or even when I just answer questions for free, I ask for the diets. Look on the Reddit, look on the Discord. When somebody asks for advice, I just say, all right, let me see your diet. Let me see your diet. We put it in a chronometer. And sometimes before even putting it in a chronometer, I see that they're full of shit. Oh, I eat two eggs and, and then chicken breasts and, and then rice and then broccoli and then, and then this. And, then, and I'm like, what the fuck? You guys are deficient in like 28 nutrients minimum. Oh, but me gonna, I use a multivitamin. In fact, the use of multivitamins is the reason why a lot of you fuckers are deficient because one, you guys think that taking a multivitamin is an excuse to eat like crap, right? You think you're just gonna eat a bunch of chips and Doritos and then pop a multivitamin and it's gonna work. Wrong, right? Two, I already explained this before, most multivitamins don't even contain the dose that they claim is inside a bottle. And number three, they compete for absorption. You are not supposed to take multivitamins. Again, they're better than nothing, right? They're better than a person eating chips and zero and a person eating chips and multivitamins, but they're not optimal. You got to have a healthy diet, guys. And again, you got to eat healthy, whole foods. It blows my mind that the simplest things that are right in front of you, right within your reach, you guys are not doing. But you want to take Fiduja, Tonkara Ali. I'm going to make a video on all those things because don't get me wrong, Tonkara Ali works. Testosterone boosters actually work. Ashwagandha works, whatever. But the reason why I don't recommend it is because you guys abuse them, right? They are band-aid solutions. They are not meant to be used long-term. They are meant to be used if you already did everything right. You already brought your testosterone levels to the high range using natural methods. And then if you want that extra boost or, you know, you traveled and you're going through a stressful exam week or whatever, then yeah, pop some ashwagandha, pop some tonkadali, whatever, for just that one week, maybe one or two weeks. But you guys are using these supplements as band-aids while ignoring the root cause. So you're slapping a band-aid on an infecting wound, right? You should not be taking Tonkarali. You should not be taking Fedoja if you are not first doing the basics, right? Once you do the basics and you bring your testosterone levels up to 900, 1,000, I don't care what supplement you take. By all means, go ahead, right? I'll give you a next maybe 10, 20, 30%, 40% boost. Yeah, but if you take any supplements while your T levels are trash, you're not fixing the root cause. Right? Because the reason why most of these testosterone boosters work anyway, the ones that do work, is because one, they actually trick you by giving you the actual nutrients that you're deficient in. So they'll put zinc in it, which is the most important one, or they'll put magnesium, vitamin D, whatever. So you think, oh, look, it's a tea booster. No, bitch, it's the fucking vitamins and minerals that you should have gotten from your diet in the first place. Right? And the second thing they do is they lower inflammation, they lower oxidative stress, which they wouldn't have to do if your diet was already healthy. So you're spending your money, wasting your money on these expensive-ass supplements when you could just fix your diet. In fact, that's the reason why if you fix your diet, clean everything up good, lower your oxidative stress, lower your inflammation, a lot of these T-boosters do absolutely nothing. Why? Because there's nothing left for them to do. And I see this all the time with clients. When they do all the basics and the T-level is already high and they decide to experiment with Tonkara Ali, all these things that actually work. That, don't get me wrong. There's studies that back them up. that actually work, right? But when somebody's T-levels are already maxed out because they're healthy and they take testosterone boosters, nothing happens. I look at all my clients' blood work. I don't play that shit, guys. I look at blood work, diet, micronutrients. I scan everything, which tells you that you shouldn't be using supplements as a replacement for a crappy diet because they would, they would give you the illusion that they're working when really they're just filling the holes that you should have gotten from your fruits and your nuts and your veggies and all that stuff. But look, look at all of the nutrients, key testosterone boosting nutrients that the average person's diet is deficient in i factored in the rda and i also added the amount that you need to be optimal right keep in mind every single one of these nutrients play a role 
in steroidogenesis, testosterone production, from luteinizing hormone secretion to cholesterol absorption by the latex cell, estol activation, all the conversion enzymes, lowering estrogen, estrog- every single one of these nutrients here. And there's more, right? There's just no fucking room, as you can see. I'm maxed out. But I can make another video showing you guys the other ones, right? But look at these key nutrients that you think you're eating enough of when you're not. Because a lot of you guys are not factoring the fact that you're eating sugar. You're not factoring the fact that uh, you got anti-nutrients in your diet. So, so even people who think they're getting enough because they're like, oh, look, a supplement, are not getting enough. And studies show that. Look at this. 99% of you fucks are not getting the optimal amount of zinc, especially if you eat a lot of grains, a lot of phytic acid and stuff like that. Right? Same thing with vitamin D, potassium, boron. I have a video on boron coming up. Right? And all these things are found in foods. You don't have to... What are you going to do? You're going to buy 50 freaking supplements? Right? All these things are found in healthy foods. Fruits, nuts, veggies, meats, eggs, salmon. But no, you want to eat rice and chicken breast. But anyway, I hope this is an eye-opener for you guys. I don't want to hear excuses about the environment. I don't want to hear excuses about age. Right? Fix your diet. Lower your inflammation. Lower your oxidative stress. Take care of your balls. And your body will thank you by increasing your testosterone levels to where it should be, which is around a thousand or more, right? There is no reason why an old, why an average 65 year old man 50 years ago should have higher T levels than you guys. All right, guys, comment below. Let me know what your biggest obstacles to boosting testosterone are. Join the Reddit, join the Discord, post all your video questions. If you have any video suggestions, post them in the Discord, right? I'm not going to respond to your video suggestions in the comment section. In the comments, just type, boost the algorithm, like the video, do all that cute shit, help to help the channel grow. But if you have video suggestions, post them in the Discord. There's a whole Discord channel specifically for that. All right, stay tuned for the next video. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.